Okay, my name is Donald Moynton, and it's D-O-N-A-L-D-B-O-Y-N-T-O-N. And how old were you in the 1964 flood? And that would be 50 years subtracted from your current age. Well, I'm 88 now. <laughs> what would that prove? 38. 38? <laughs> you were about 38? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll have you say that for us. I'm okay, I was 38 then at the time of the flood. Oh, this was my, this was my, uh, the, I was a dairyman. This was a full-time job. Self, in, I was self-employed dairyman. Yeah. How many cattle did you, or how many uh, cows did you have? Well, we milked, but, but I milked between 80 and 90 head in the milking herd. And we had the young stock beside. We raised our own young stock. Yeah. And um, so tell me what happened when it started just raining so much in December of 1964. What, so, what, what, when did you notice you had more than just a bit of rain? Well, we, we, got, we, we, we did get floods just about every year. We didn't pay too much attention to it, but this, this time it, it just didn't stop. <laughs> it just kept coming. See, it's what the... They called a perfect storm. So we had this big storm that come in with a lot of warm rain, and there was a big snow snowpack inland in, in the mountains, and it melted all that snow, and that all and the, this and it all come down at once, and then out in the ocean there was a big storm, and that held the water back from going out. It was a it's a perfect was a perfect storm, a perfect thing. To, yeah. And what happened out here at your dairy? Well, we we got the cows all up and we locked them in the stanchions in the barn, so to keep them out of trouble. And the young stock we put them in another barn and we we locked them in there. Yeah, and we thought they'd be all right, but the the water just kept raising. <laughs> it didn't stop. <laughs> yeah, we never seen anything like that before. And then uh, your wife was over in the house, which is on the property, and you were over in the barn. Uh, after we got the, the cows secured as much as we could, went to the house, and Marie, my wife, was there with the five children. It's a two-story house, and which the water started coming in the house, so then we we started raising a lot of stuff up and bringing them upstairs in the the the, the upper deck, and uh, we did what we could. And then about two o'clock in the afternoon, I think it was, I says, "Well, I gotta I gotta go out to the barn and I gotta watch the cows because I'm afraid I'm gonna lose some." And so I got some 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 white uh, some dry clothes. And I held them above my head, and I had a hundred yards to go from the house to the barn, and it was really swift by that time. And I told Maria, I says, "I can go to the barn, but I can't come back because the water's too swift." It was probably about oh, way steep, up this deep, yeah. So that was so. From then on, I was in the barn, and Maria was in the house, and. She had to take care of the house and the uh, kids because there wasn't anything I could do over there anyhow. So it was up to me. I said, well, I didn't want to lose the cows because that was our living. Yeah. And how did that go for you out, the, out in the barn? How did you communicate with her when you were I out? didn't. No way. And there was a terrific south wind. And it was just the waves were... Well, you can see the, the wall of that cement barn there, and the waves would hit that wall, and it was just like being out in the, in the ocean in the, in a, with a boat. The whole barn would shake. <laughs> it was just, it was a terrific uh, south wind. And I, I was up on the, the baled hay in the, middle of the barn where it was dry and the cows were down in the stanchions they were the water was up near, oh about halfway up on their sides and they'd get a gust of wind every so often 
and it was blowing the shakes off of the north. The south wind was blowing the shakes off the north side of the barn, just from the, the section. <laughs> the south, the, the shakes stayed good on the south side, but on the north side, the, there was so much suction, I guess, from the wind, it was just pulling shakes right off. I could see daylight through the roof. <laughs> That south wind was just like a battering ram. It was just beating everything up all over the valley. I bet the cows were starting to panic because they were stuck in their... Well, that's why I had them in the stanchions. And then after about two days, they've been in the, in the stanchions. And were, the cows were heavy with calf because we they were going to drop their calves in the next month or two. And they got so tired. I was just standing there in the stanchions. I was up in the hay mow, and it was at night, and I had my flashlight. I'd hear a big splash, and I looked down there, I shined the light down there, and I could see there, there wasn't a cow in, that, in, in, the, in the stanchion there. She just collapsed. So i hurry up and go down there, open the stanchion up, and boy, the cow put her head up, and she's still alive. <laughs> she wasn't drowned yet, but they got stiff, I guess, from just standing there so long and they were so heavy with calf. Well, that happened about four or five times. And I, I says, boy, <laughs> I, I'm going to lose some cows. I got to do something about this. So I come down off the hay mow and I, I knocked some of the stanchions out about a 14 foot sections. And I let the, let the cows out so they could move around a little. But then I was afraid that they might get out so I nailed some two by fours over the the driveway doors so they couldn't get out because the driveway doors were st and the pressure of the water was starting to bo just to, to bow, bow out. They, they, they couldn't stay much longer. And then the cows were all right when they could move around a little. They were all right then, you know. Now these weren't cows that you were milking. Um, uh, no. I, at this time, well, some of them I were and some of them I weren't. I wasn't milking too many of them. No. No, that After the flood, that the, I, in fact, I only milked one. <laughs> and that's one that just had a calf. She had, she had to be milked. The rest of them we didn't milk for a couple months. They just got a rest. <laughs> they went dry after that. But but there was, I didn't lose a cow, but I think there was about five or six of them that aborted their calves from being in that water that long, I guess, yeah. But, uh, I'm thinking the sound of the water hitting the side of the barn must have just been really loud. Oh, it was just a roar. Yeah, and then those gusts would hit. And, well, a funny thing happened right in the middle of the night through the, the hay was, there was a gap in that, where that door was being forced, to, the water was f forcing the door to open, and there was a gap of about a foot, and the, the hay was floating in the barn, it was starting to, to plug it up, so I thought, oh, I'll have to, to free that hay so it won't take the door out. And I was working there with that hay, and all of a sudden I had a snake in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know where it come from or what if it were, what kind of a snake it was. I didn't examine it, boy. It went. <laughs> We've heard stories of um, because of all the debris that came down the river from upriver, that rattlesnakes were coming down the river. I heard that, yeah, over in Lolita. Yeah, they said that they found the rattlesnakes in a driftwood, but they says they weren't very uh, hostile. It was too cold and wet down here for them. They were, pr they were pretty tame. <laughs> I didn't see any of them. I did see some turtles down here, some small turtles. Yeah. But uh, it also it wiped out all our, our raccoons that we had that lived under the buildings. They, they got trapped in there and they died. And Marie can tell you more about the house, but uh, I still remember that we had a cat that got under the the house when the water was coming up. 
and that poor thing was just screaming because it, it was slowly drowning and, and there was so much noise we couldn't pinpoint where it was. We couldn't help it. And it kept screaming for an hour or two and finally everything went quiet. You know, it was just, oh, it was terrible. But we couldn't help it. To hear, just to hear that, oh, it was terrible, you know, but, uh, Robert Donald, you need to come here. What's that? Oh, we're, we're waiting for the car to stop. Oh, okay. There was a truck Robert, driving Robert, go see Morgan now. Morgan's no, no, you're in the background of the you're, movie. You can't, okay. you're distracting. Please, bud. You're distracting Grandpa here. Thank you. Thank you. So um, one of the things uh, about the timing of the flood is it was during the Christmas holidays. Did that affect your family's ability to celebrate Christmas like you normally do? Oh, yeah. There wasn't any celebration. <laughs> no, forget it. No, we didn't get out of here for two or three days. And finally, the water dropped a little. And then I, I, I told Marie, I said, well, I'll go up with the tractor. And I had the bucket in the front. And maybe I can get some groceries and get something to eat. And I, got, I made it uptown, and I, and I was giving this fellow a big order for groceries. And he says, well, why don't you go to the fairgrounds? They're, they're handing out free meals. I said, I never, nobody said anything to me. It's news to me. <laughs> so I come back, and you know, I brought the, brought the groceries on. And eventually, we did get some of the, the kids up there to get some of the, the meals on the, at the fairgrounds, yes. Yeah. and that they had like a, a place if your home was destroyed that you could, you could yeah. have a nice place. Yeah, some people were, they were really hurting. We were, it was bad here, but we were a lot fortunate and a lot of people here in the valley, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 